Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. In today's episode, I want to show you a couple of, let's say, patterns or return types that are dangerous. So let's start with the more classical version. I have a function and that returns an integer by reference. And there are certain scenarios where that might be okay. So maybe fun received an integer as reference, as a parameter in, and now it returns it. It would be okay -ish. The dangerous case I like to talk about today is we have a variable that's declared local inside a function and you're returning this one because that means that i here is created on the stack inside of fun but once we leave fun here in line 10 or 11 that means that the stack where i is stored gets freed um, in some sense so it no longer at least belongs to the function so there is no delete or something like that but our stack pointer gets decremented and the next function getting called gets hold of that stack and changes the value. Maybe it's no longer an integer in there at all. But we still have as a caller of fun a reference to something that's on the stack that no longer belongs to us. That's dangerous because it means we can temper somebody else's object and it also means that we might not get the value that we really are looking for. So this is why you should always be cautious returning references from functions, okay? It should never ever be a stack variable that you are returning at this point. As I said, this is the simple case, okay? Easy to spot, I would say. The more difficult one is this here. I have a function called lamp here, which returns auto. Internally, it also comes with an integer i. And what lamp here returns is a lambda. My lambda here returns i plus 2 and it captures i by reference. So this is equivalent to fun in the you shouldn't do it part. Because i here, as before in fun, is on the stack inside lamp. Once we return from lamp, i no longer belongs to anybody. The next caller might get the same stack position and change it. Now, this is a case where we indirectly return the reference to i because our lambda here captures i by reference. And then we are returning the lambda itself without executing it. So everybody calling lamb can later execute this lambda multiple times. But then internally, it refers to a variable that previously was on a stack that no longer belongs to us. So this is the same scenario. This is something you have to watch out for. It is undefined behavior doing that, of course. You can correct this one here by saying you want to capture by copy. Okay, then your lambda becomes safe. So one rule of thumb here is you should never have a lambda that you return capture anything by reference because you have then to be very cautious what things get captured by reference. Okay, so this is a rough rule of thumb. Don't do that, it makes your life easier. But of course, you can also have lambdas that capture things by reference if they live longer than the function or than the lambda itself. Now, there are two other things which new standards brought us that are equivalently nasty and hard to see. So let's look at first at the C17 library type std string view. Um, I like std string view, it's great for maintaining strings and then having only one for read-only strings. Now what I'm doing here in line 22, I'm putting a std string s with the contents hello C++ on the stack here in my function view. And then I'm returning a string view created out of that std string. Now as the name here from the type and my function implies, it's only a view. A string view is only a view on data. It's a non-owning container opposed to std string, which owns the data. std string view only stores a pointer and a length to the data. 
That means once we return from this function, our std string view now references something that's stored on the stack in view. So this is the exact same pattern as for our initial function fun. This is undefined behavior because our string view now points us to something that's no longer there, that no longer belongs to us. And this is a very, well, difficult to spot bug because it does not involve references here that we write ourselves, okay? The simple rule here is be cautious or never return a string view from a function. There are once again situations where that can be safe Say we have a class type that stores a string internally and gives us access by returning a string view to it, a read-only access. That one is safe as long as we don't access the data after the lifetime of the object ended. But that would be a possibility. Now looking at the last candidate here, my function read, which um, uses the data type std span, which came in with C++20. So span is roughly the same as a string view, but a string view is dedicated to constant strings. So it only works with read-only strings, so gives us read-only access to strings. While std span, as we can see here, works with every type and isn't const by default. So we can also say that it takes a const std byte or something like that. But we have more freedom here, but it's less trimmed for strings. So for strings, always use string view. And for other types, like I'm doing it here for a sequence of bytes, is to span is a great candidate. Now what I'm doing here, in line 29, I have a std array of std bytes with the size 20. I'm simply default constructing it. Don't want to distract us too much. And then I'm returning data here at this point, which automatically converts data to a std span. But as string view, std span is a non-owning container. It stores a pointer of std bytes in my case and the length of the std array internally. It does not copy the data. It does not own the data. That means once we are returning a span from this function, because my data array here in line 29 is on the stack in read, we are once again looking at undefined behavior. That means you have at least two situations here, returning a reference directly, returning a lambda that captured something by reference, where you can spot the reference sign and understanding that you're doing something dangerous here, or you can have the more, well, hard to see version by returning a string view or a span. So be cautious with them. If I transform this, so C++ in science doesn't show anything um, interesting in particular here, I would say. But if you transform this, then with clan here, you can see we get a warning that we are returning in line number 10 here, i, that's referencing a stack variable. We get also the same warning for my lambda here, where the compiler tells us that we here implicitly capture something that's on the stack, but there is no diagnosis for the few or the read function. So these are the more, well, to watch out for functions than the other two. So I hope that helps you to write better code and, and avoid long debugging sessions by avoiding these traps here and um, watch out for functions returning references or functions returning string views or spans. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye bye.